Hi, it's Eric Lofholm, and today I have a very special guest. I'm joined by Don Green, CEO and Executive Director of the Napoleon Hill, Founda Napoleon Hill Foundation. And Don, it's great to be with you today, and I'd love to just spend a couple minutes and have you share anything you'd like to share about Napoleon Hill, about the foundation, about the principles, and um, what would you like to share today? Well, uh... I can tell you're happy with what you're doing, and I hope it comes across. I am. I absolutely, I got the best job in the world. I mean, I have been asked 1,000 times plus, how in the world did I get the job? To start off with, Wise is a small town with three red lights. Two of them we don't even need, but that gives you a little prestige to say <laughs> you've got three red lights. It is, a, it is the home of the uh, University of Virginia of Wise, which is the only branch of the University of Virginia that founded by Thomas Jefferson. We're the only branch. So we have a close tie with uh, with them. In fact, is our offices is on the premises of the University of Virginia Wise. And if you look behind me, you, these are that we're this is this is a library portion of the foreign books with a few pictures over my uh, head or you can see the pictures. Uh, one of them is um, myself and Russell Brunson. He came here to the uh, benefactors dinner we have every year. And last year, uh, last year we were benefactor of the year for the contribution we made to the University of Virginia. This past year, I was volunteer of the year, an award I got 20 some years ago for what I contributed. And the other picture on the other side is Cleona and some of the people who were involved in the, and myself with Napoleon Hill Institute. They came down here and did a did a couple of days uh, workshop and visit, and we've had them a few times. Uh, and we're not open to the public because uh, we're not a museum. As I tell uh, Zane, who's my assistant, we're here for people who are serious. We are not here for people who cu are curious. We're not a museum, though we do have all the archives. But we do allow people that we're doing business with, like a foreign publishers. In fact, as I've got them coming March the 1st, that publish a tremendous lot of our books and they've been here before. They want to visit again. And uh, and then Cleona and the, uh, the Napoleon Hill Institute, and we put on seminars uh, uh, and we allow them to come if they're involved in, in that. And then we have an online course of the, of the principles uh, that we've taught for a long, long time. We used to do it in person, but with COVID, it went to, uh, uh, to the internet online except we do the final portion of it, which we call certification over a three day weekend. And the next one is scheduled for July 11th. Um, we'll let the people that's involved in it come here and we'll put on a, a three day workshop seminar and we'll allow them to see the, uh, we, we probably got at least 150 books uh, that Napoleon Hill signed that never circulated. Okay. We got all these old manuscripts, like we got the original Law of Success manuscript, which weighs about 20 pounds. It's about six inches thick, only typed on one page, one side. Mm -hmm. And we have um, the Outwitting the Devil manuscript. Uh, we've got probably five sets of the 1928 uh, Law of Success, uh, first, first uh, printing of the Law of Success. And, just on and on and on. We got a Parker Penn. He did lessons to Parker Penn, people, the founder. And we have his eyeglasses, his marriage license, his cowboy hat at W. Clements on, give him just uh, his bifocals, uh, marriage license, honorary doctorate degrees. And we've got that stuff framed or displayed in cases or something else where we can where we can protect it. So it is, I know the last group we had, you had to, I had the I went in the devil manuscript and and the lady sat there and put her hands on it and meditated on that with the devil. So I don't know what she come out of it, but uh, <laughs> anyway, any, anyway uh, uh, we'll 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 see. But uh, I know people are thrilled to death to be able to come uh, to uh, and and and, the, and we've done so well. I mean, like the Zane had set me up the computer. His mom teaches that in school. But uh, he, he came to work in eighth grade. I hired him a week. He turned 14 That's and, and got him to work for me. And he worked all the way through high school, finished college in three years. And he got his uh, MBA in uh, 
two years online. And by the age of 21, he was able to finance his own uh, house, him and his little bride, who, who's a nurse, without any help. And uh, uh, he, uh, when he started college at 17, I was teaching him some things at his mother's request. He, he opened up a account buying stock when he was 17 years old mm -hmm. and uh, when he started college. And he also all, already had a retirement account set up. So uh, he's been here 12 years. He's only 26 years old. And the reason we, he's here, his sister, his two in the family, his sister, she worked with me six years. She's valedictorian she, in high school. She's a straight A student in college, finished in three years. And she's a pharmacist. The fact is, I was a, uh, I was chairman of the board of the hospital, so uh, they remember me. So I got her a job as a pharmacist. She's still there. The other little girl was named Brooke. Her dad was a coal miner also, and uh, uh, she's a medical doctor today. So I know that being around the material, I don't want to take credit for it, but I know being around the material and all so forth, all this positive energy, it uh, it rubs off on them. You know, yeah, uh, it it rubs off on them. I wish I could. I wish I could involve more, but that's the reason we teach the class to. Uh, we've uh, give scholarships to college started in '98, and so last year I had the idea. I said, "Gosh, I get a couple million dollars in a fund, and would pay for high school kids, and uh, we would like 125 thousand in one year, of putting two million dollars in the high school fund, uh, and it will pay about 200." students uh, from a poverty shaken area to take the online course through the University of Virginia and they get three hours credit and we call it keys to success it's a class I started teaching in 1998 I taught wow. it about I taught it 11 or 12 times and I give them the money back for scholarships but it's been taught now well this is a 26 year it's been it's been taught but now we're teaching to hundreds of high school kids in the area so uh, I feel real good about the accomplishments. And that's the reason, you know, I'm going to be 80. Of course, you can look at me and tell, I'm not no spring chicken. I'll be 84 in a few days, but uh, gosh, the good Lord's got her, got her number, but uh, I'm not ready to, I'm not ready for a rocking chair. <laughs> we, got, we got too much stuff to do. I, honestly, Mr. Stone, uh, Debbie Clement Stone was a billionaire. I would, he's the one I'm responsible for my, for my job. And he said one day, and I wanted to ask him so bad, and I didn't have the nerve. He said, "I've got." He said, "I've got to live to be a hundred, and and uh, and then I wanted to ask him why, but he went on to say it. He had so much work to do. He said he'd be a hundred before he got it all done. He lived to be a hundred, uh, past a hundred. In fact, his he made a list out who he wanted to come to, not his funeral, but his celebration, and I went to it in uh, Chicago." They left a message on my recorder. It said, uh, Mr. Stone passed away. You might have heard the news and said he made out his list of the people to invite to his celebration. And he said, you're on the list. And I went and Paul Harvey was there. If you remember Paul Harvey, mm -hmm. uh, I remember him talking. He was getting ready to go to Russia and, and to give some lectures. And uh, I think the whole cabinet of uh, Richard Nixon was there. I got introduced to several of them, uh, but, uh, you know, he was a big Nixon fan, a big, uh, he's a conservative Republican. And uh, uh, so it was, uh, it was, it was held on a, in a country club at their close to Northwestern College. And uh, they had the, they had the fancy music and they, they served big jumbo shrimp and orders and it wasn't, and it, of course there was no way there. I mean, it's just, it, it just for him. Uh, and, uh, and I, re I remember uh, when I went in, he, he seated me and I was, and, and, and behind me was uh, I don't, I, more than a row of uh, African Americans. And I, I was trying to put it together, you know, and, uh, and that, so I asked after, after, that and they said he had helped a uh, African American school uh, in Chicago. Uh, he he'd, he'd always supported the community and the and the schools and so uh, they he was remembered for that. But uh, the senators come to it and all these other all these other people came to it because he had such he had such an influence. But see now, here I, t I tell the 
I, t I tell this, I've told it a thousand times until kisses. Hey, sure as an opportunity in your life comes by. I'm talking about the force. We can talk about anything. Sure as an opportunity. Later on, are you going to say, gosh, I'm so glad I took that opportunity. Or are you going to be one of them to say, I wonder what would happen if I'd have done that. I said, well, one day I, or one night I gave a talk in Pound, Virginia. That's where, that's 15 minutes from here. That's where Napoleon Hill was born. I spoke to historical society and two things I remember, they didn't pay me nothing. And the second thing, it didn't even feed me. It was about 20 people there and I talked about Napoleon Hill, but I thought about it and I listened to some audio tapes of Mr. Stone as I was driving home. And so when I got home, I took a pad out, which I leave on my nightstand. So if I wake up and I think of something other, I'll get, I'll write down. And uh, so uh, when I got home, I took that pad before I went to bed and I wrote a letter to the Napoleon Hill Foundation. They were in North Brooks, Illinois, suburb of Chicago. I told them what I'd done and so forth. And I didn't ask to come to see them. I didn't ask for anything. I just told them things that I'd done concerning Napoleon Hill. And I got a letter back. Mr. Stone invited me to come to have dinner with them. With them. And uh, of course, I could, at that time, or I see I had a cable TV company. I had a spring water company. Uh, I said I had cable, spring water, dry cleaning business. I had Dollar General stores, pizza pluses. I developed land for Walmart and for nursing home. And uh, God, I don't know what. I, well, heck, I was president of chamber of commerce. I was chairman of the board of the local Catholic hospital. I was on the board to college. I really didn't need no other duties, but I thought it was an honor. So I. I flew up. I got an early flight because I thought, you know, we have to change planes here. It's a small town. So I I, thought I left early, so I got there probably three hours before the meeting day. And I watched for Mr. Stone, and he traveled with two people, and I think they're both of them were nurses, a man and a woman, that traveled with him. And here he comes, you know, he's got that suit on. He comes, he's got the big cuff links, that little mustache. And... Uh, he knew some of the people there at the airlines, and we actually met in their offices or at our airport, and they had the meal catered into us, and we talked about the books and all. He finally told me, he called me a boy, <laughs> uh, uh, because he he was probably 80, but he said, boy, you know more about these books than I do. He said, you ought to be a board member, and I said, Mr. Stone, and everybody called him Mr. Stone, said, Ronald Reagan, I got a picture in my office that says, uh, made it to the White House of him and Reagan and, and him. And he says, to my friend, Clem, Ronald Reagan. Everybody else called him Mr. Stone. Or we all called him Mr. Stone. I never hear nobody address him first name. But uh, uh, so uh, I uh, become a board member, non-paying. They send me the reports and then they pay my expenses when I travel. If I go to board meetings and uh, and so it was set up and the, and uh, at, uh, I was on the board for, and I knew after a few years that Mike uh, Rent was the only CEO ahead, and he would like to retire. He wasn't, he couldn't, uh, he couldn't, wasn't that physically able to travel. And so they had told me, if you ever want to get out of banking, well, I had a chance to sell the bank in the year 2000. I pick up the phone call and I said, I'm going to sell the bank. And, uh, and uh, so I worked out a, was that called a deal? <laughs> I went home and told my wife, I said, uh, I said, uh, uh, we we sold the bank and I've still got a job, but I said, I'm going to work for the foundation. I said, the bank's going to pay me for your salary, give me, let me keep my company car and pay my ben benefits and all, insurance and so forth for a year. And uh, she said, and, and what are you going to make with the foundation? I said, the same money. She said, something don't seem right about that. I said, what do you mean? She said, you're two different people and you're paying, paying you. You're only working for one of them. I said, no, Phil, honey. I said, it's my wife's name, Phil. I said, Phil, honey, that, that's what you call a deal. They were willing to pay me a, a year of salary if I would not go to work for a competitor. Because if I went to work for a competitor, then people going to follow me. And I told them I wouldn't do that. I'd give them a letter in writing. I said, no, we, we take your word. So they did that. And so I I uh, I walked out a, a two-week notice and told them as much stuff as I could. 
And it wasn't nothing to, uh, I told the foundation that the board, I would move it to Wise. Can you do that? I said, yeah. I said, I, I've got an office in the cleaners I can set up. And I've already got the books. I own the books. I said, all I need is transfer the, transfer the, the uh, financial accounts locally. And uh, I did. And I went and bought a phone. And I built in fax machine. Now, this is 2000. This is before the internet. Mm -hmm. I bought a phone and a fax machine. And I don't remember. It's $89. It's, it's less than $100. And uh, I was in business. I had to have a separate phone line because of the of the dry cleaners and they had to keep the door shut because of noise. But uh, I worked there until the college said, Don, why don't you move your office out on campus? We'll give you a spot. So we have six, we have six rooms uh, that uh, that uh, house our offices and our archives and, and so forth. And uh, it's just been absolutely wonderful. I mean, we're, we had one foreign publisher and I started, we have more than 500 foreign publishers. Wow. We got we got 40 different publishers in Russia alone. Wow. And I, uh, and, I, and uh, uh, close 50 in China, last time I counted them. Wow. 40 some in Spanish. But uh, like this morning, I worked on Korea, China, and the last one a few minutes ago, I got that worked out in Norway. I mean, we work on some every day. Some foreign for some uh, foreign contracts, either sign them one or do a deal or make an offer or send them. Uh, so that's where a good portion of our money comes from for the foreign, foreign publications. Yeah. Uh, so it's been a wonderful world. I see these two things, as, as I tell people, is I'm help. We're able to help all these kids and then see I meet people like Ray. I would never establish a relationship or friendship with you if it hadn't been for Napoleon Hill. So I give credit. It, I give credit. So it's got a lot of, it's got a lot of side, the side effects. And I try to teach it to some people, and 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 uh, so, and sometimes the things is hard. They they don't see opportunities. And I I, I would give you an example. We had a little movie that had a place a uh, party in seven or eight years ago. I flew to California and did the filming. I had a call from a guy just just a couple months ago, and. Uh, he told me, he said there was a lady in South Africa who contacted him, wanted to be asked about uh, Napoleon Hill. And uh, so uh, we arranged a phone call. She was uh, she was uh, absolutely thrilled to death, sent me a nice message. But she's already signed up as a coach and paid and invested in Napoleon Hill Institute. And right now I'm working on a contract for her to publish some books in South, in, uh, in South Africa. But you never know where a little opportunity or something like that leads to for example i don't i don't have on i don't have on a coach today but my jackets always work napoleon hill lapel pins second girl rich pins it's a conversation piece and and uh, if i went in the airport or somebody people come up and said hey that pin you got there said i i read that book and then you know one thing leads to another but and yeah. what i do is i take the pin off and give it to them last year when al and i was in germany at the book fair, you know, they have 250, 300,000 visitors. We have a booth there. I think it's twelve or $15,000, but it's really good for us. We have 10 or 12 feet or something, big old banner, Napoleon Hill Foundation. We ship over a sample of our books. But then we notify all the publishers at the, at the book fair that we're going to be there. And, of course, a lot of them contact us, and they want, they want 10 or 15 minutes. So we schedule all that time out for them for that week we're over there. So we, when we were in that booth, we didn't want to leave. We had a publisher in there with us, but Al and I, we didn't want to leave and be gone from a booth. We went out to eat of the night. We eat of the morning before we, to Marriott we, before we went. And then, but then lunch, we didn't want to be gone long. So they had a little booth set up inside the, inside the, which is the world's oldest book fair. It's, a, it's the only one worth going to as far as I'm concerned. And, uh, uh, we was grabbing some bite to eat. Of course, we travel a lot. The adequate's a little different. Like if you're at a table and there's two of you and there's still two room for two more people and there's no table, they say, I'm beside of you. We don't do that in this country. We know where I've been. But anyway, they do it in all the foreign countries I've been. So these two ladies are sitting there. We got, went through line, got us a, got us a pre-fixed chicken sandwich or something or other. And we go to sit down. There's no empty tables. These two women sitting across from each other. Alan sat across the side of one of them. I sat beside the other. 
and uh, nothing thought about it. But one of them leaned over and she said, hey, said, what's that on your coat there? And I said, what's that thick of the recipe? She said, we published that book. And I said, where are you from? She said, Netherlands. The week before Al and I went over, they had, we had, they had wired us $40-some thousand dollars royalties for that. So what did I do? I took that pen off and only had the one. I took the one off and gave it to one of them. I should have thought to, because usually I curve. I usually curve some in my pocket. I probably got, I probably got, let's see. I guarantee you, I got one in my pocket or in my coat pocket one because I, uh, but I always do and I always have some in the car because yeah. it, it's, a, I'm, heck, the, it's, it's an, the pen is an actual, it's an actual, uh, uh, if you don't have one, you'll have one in a few days. Okay. Okay. Uh, but it's an actual picture of this book. Right okay. Here. That's the official book. And you can even read Napoleon Hill's signature on that little old pen. It's how, yeah. that's how, wow. That, that's how good it is. But that's the official Think and Grow Rich. That's an exact copy of Napoleon Hill's personal 37 editions, which we have in the office. For example, yeah. if you just flip this book open on page 291, it's chapter 12, Subconscious Mind, 291. That's exactly the same page will appear in 1937 because I had them do it exactly. So if you got each one of the books, you don't have to look and wonder, 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 wonder where it is. And of course, you can see the books back in was it was a large print, truly easy yeah. to read. So that that's the official that's the official book, and that's the second girl which we get royalties from. And yeah. uh, and that, and I said I got a lady this morning from South Africa, wanting a hundred of them shipped to South Africa. I don't I don't have no idea what the law what the shipping cost is, but it's expensive to ship. Right, it's, it's heavy. Well, Don, I really appreciate you taking a few minutes out today. Um, if I can ever do anything for you or uh, for the foundation, um, that is a sincere offer. I'm happy to use my network and connections. If there's anything I could ever do to be of service to you. And uh, I've been studying uh, Think and Grow Rich since the 1980s. And I absolutely love the book. And I've encouraged so many people to, to get and connect connected to Napoleon's principles. And I just thank you for taking some time out today to be with me. Well, here's a, uh, I don't know where you've seen this one. It's just come out last month. Uh, and it's, it's, it's composed. It's Napoleon Hill. I did the introduction, but it's, it's not got my name on it because it's not my writing. I did the introduction to it, but it's the fourth proven pill principle of success at, in, 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 in setting goals. And we're actually using it starting I guess starting this week, uh, the Napoleon Hill Institution, they're using it to coach by because okay. it's amazing that, uh, that, that people, people uh, uh, they may have a wish list, but the four parts it covers is personal initiative, mastermind alliance, going the extra mile and learning from adversity. And it's it's not a thick book, but it, gosh, it, it just took off. I mean, you know, I guess uh, the topic and a foreign, foreign publisher. So, it's going to be, it's a, it's a real, it's a real easy to, to, to do it. So, so you said something other, so that, that will go in the, that will go in the mail to you along with the Think and Grow Rich pen. So we can always supply. Okay. Them. Well, I will love wearing that pin. I'd be honored to wear that pin. And It'll again, be, if there's anything I can do for you or the, for the foundation, Don, the answer is yes. Okay. I want well, let me make sure I've got your current address. Two eight one six Hillcrest Road. You got it. That's it. Oakland, California. Okay. Well, Don, thank you for the time today. I really appreciate it, and I appreciate you and your friendship. Well, you're welcome. If I can help you, uh, let me know. And I think you're a pretty good start on Zig Ziglar. A combination of him and a combination of him and uh, Napoleon Hill would make a pretty good go. There you go. That's it. I love it. All right, but Don, I'll let you go. You have a great day. Okay, you too. Okay, bye-bye.